Japan, the United Kingdom, and Italy have taken another decisive step toward realizing their joint sixth-generation fighter under the Global Combat Air Program, and the latest ministerial meeting highlights how quickly the project is transitioning from political vision to concrete industrial integration. The video conference, held on November 25 and lasting just under an hour and a half, brought together Japan's new Defense Minister Minoru Koizumi, UK Defense Secretary John Healy, and Italy's Guido Crosetto. What emerged from this discussion is not simply a reaffirmation of commitment, but a coordinated push to lock in the program's first international integration contract before the end of 2025, a crucial milestone that will define how the governments and the newly formed Edge Wing Consortium will work together in the coming years. This meeting showcases a growing sense of urgency among the partners, driven by rapid global military modernization and the need to secure technological superiority in the Indo-Pacific and across Europe. The fact that the ministers emphasize the finalization of the first GCAP integration contract speaks volumes about the program's evolution. Up to now, most cooperation has centered on conceptual development, early technology demonstrators, and the political alignment required for a multinational aircraft program of such scale. The transition to a fully integrated industrial phase marks the point at which major cost commitments, long-term production planning, and interoperable technology paths must be agreed upon. The GCAP Intergovernmental Organization, GIGO, and the Edge Wing Industry Consortium, formed from Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, BAE Systems, and Leonardo, will essentially dictate how design, testing, prototyping, and eventual production lines will be synchronized across three continents. Getting this contract signed before year-end signals that all parties want to avoid the delays and complications that have plagued earlier multinational fighter programs like the Eurofighter Typhoon or the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. A large part of the urgency stems from the narrowing window in which the GCAP partners can deliver a viable sixth-generation aircraft by the mid-2030s. China and the United States are already advancing their own sixth-gen platforms, and losing even one or two years early in a project of this complexity could create a capability gap that would persist for decades. For Japan, which faces growing pressure from China's expanding air power, the GCAP is not merely an industrial initiative, it is a core component of the nation's future air defense system after the retirement of the F-2 and gradual aging of its F-15 fleet. Ensuring that Tokyo remains integrated into a cutting-edge fighter development ecosystem also keeps Japan's defense industry competitive and technologically relevant, particularly in advanced materials, avionics, and propulsion. The propulsion system has repeatedly been highlighted as the technological centerpiece of GCAP, and this meeting reinforced that view. Officials again pointed to the use of high-temperature materials, advanced cooling systems, and additive manufacturing incorporated into the power plant. These features are not incremental improvements, they are necessary breakthroughs. Sixth-generation aircraft will require massive on-board power for next-generation sensors, adaptive electronic warfare suites, and possibly directed energy weapons. The ability to generate, distribute, and cool unprecedented levels of thermal energy will determine whether the GCAP aircraft can field the capabilities needed to survive and dominate in heavily contested airspace. The fact that propulsion discussions are already so advanced suggests that the partners are aligning around a common technical baseline, reducing the risk of divergent national requirements later in the program. The ministers also used the meeting to reinforce the broader strategic significance of their partnership. For the UK, GCAP is essential to maintaining a sovereign combat air design and manufacturing base after the Eurofighter program tapers off. Without GCAP, Britain would face either dependence on foreign fighter programs or the erosion of one of its most advanced industrial sectors. Italy, on the other hand, views the trilateral program as a bridge between Europe and Asia, strengthening its diplomatic and industrial standing while ensuring long-term employment in its aerospace sector. Rome has repeatedly emphasized that GCAP is as much about strengthening trans-regional security architectures as it is about building an aircraft. For Japan, 
the program symbolizes its expanding defense partnerships and its shift toward deeper multilateral cooperation in response to growing regional challenges. Another subtle but important point emerging from the meeting is the focus on coordination, both political and industrial. Multinational fighter programs require close alignment on timelines, budgets, work share, and technology transfer rules. The ministers pledge to ensure that program decisions continue to align across the three partner nations reflects an awareness that any misalignment could introduce delays and cost escalations. This is particularly relevant given the different regulatory environments and defense procurement systems in Japan, the UK, and Italy. The establishment of GAIGO as a dedicated intergovernmental body is intended to prevent the kinds of bureaucratic bottlenecks that have slowed past fighter programs. The emphasis on maintaining momentum indicates that the partners want to avoid falling into the trap of annual renegotiations or shifting national priorities. The meeting also carried a symbolic element, especially with Healy and Crosetto welcoming Koizumi to his new position. Continuity of leadership is vital in long-term defense programs, and early reassurance that Koizumi intends to steadily advance GCAP helps stabilize the political foundation of the project. Leadership changes in any of the three nations could introduce uncertainty, but this show of unity suggests that the governments understand the geopolitical importance of keeping GCAP on track. At a time when Europe is redefining its defense posture and the Indo-Pacific is becoming an increasingly contested region, trilateral cooperation on a sixth-generation fighter sends a strong message of technological ambition and strategic alignment. Viewed more broadly, GCAP represents a notable departure from traditional defense industrial patterns. Japan's collaboration with European partners, rather than relying solely on U.S. defense programs, reflects its desire to diversify and build more balanced security relationships. Meanwhile, London and Rome gain access to Japan's market, technological expertise, and regional strategic environment. This mutual benefit model showcases a new type of trans-regional defense cooperation shaped less by geography and more by shared security concerns and industrial capabilities. If GCAP succeeds, it could serve as a template for future multinational programs in the era of rapidly evolving threats and tightening defense budgets. Ultimately, the November 25th meeting shows that the GCAP partners are entering a critical phase, one where political declarations must translate into engineering solutions, and where industrial structures must support ambitious timelines. The decision to push for the year-end integration contract is an acknowledgement that the world is not waiting for them. The acceleration of near-peer competition in air power, combined with the rapidly evolving nature of air combat, means that Japan, the UK, and Italy must remain synchronized, committed, and forward-leaning. Their joint message is clear, GCAP is not just progressing, it is moving with intent, momentum, and growing strategic purpose.